This is the tail end of a spring-loaded shooter manufactured before 2020, and this is the tail end of a spring-loaded shooter manufactured since 2020. Old. New. Old. New. Now don't feel bad if you never knew this. It takes a very special kind of somebody to notice these types of things. You have to be the sort of guy who can remember the names that he gave to every single individual blade of grass on his school playground when the other kids wouldn't let him play with them. And since I never named any blades of grass on my school playground, this is vacuously true for me. I mean, what kind of a loser names the blades of grass on their school playground? Everybody knows you need to name the wood chips first. This one's name is Carl. Hi, Carl. Anyways, the point is, they changed the spring-loaded shooter mold. Now, I've actually already made a video talking about this whole thing, and in that video, I falsely claimed that this small change to the mold wouldn't change how far the spring-loaded shooter traveled. Sufficeth to say, Carl was very disappointed in me that day. I'm sorry, Carl. And so I went on a fun little adventure to determine exactly how far a spring-loaded shooter from nowadays travels compared to a spring-loaded shooter from then-a-days. The first question you gotta ask yourself is, well, how fast is a spring-loaded shooter even going? Now here's your fair warning, there is a little bit of math coming up here. The journey starts with this nifty-difty little equation here that relates quite nicely to springs. That of course being that the potential energy stored in a spring is equal to one-half times the spring constant of said spring times how far it is compressed or stretched. Then times that same last thing again so that you get it squared. Now there's this other nifty-difty little equation that says that your starting energy is going to be equal to your ending energy plus or minus some amount of, like, work that you did. But just having this doesn't really help us that much. We need to have And I'm sure that looks big and scary, but I promise you, it's really not. All that this is saying is that one half times the mass times the initial velocity squared plus one half times the spring constant times the initial spring station squared plus mass times the gravity times the initial height equals one half times the mass times the final velocity squared plus one half times the spring constant times the final velocity squared plus mass times the gravity times the final height plus minus the number of velocity in rows. You see, nice and simple. And this is the equation that we're gonna use. The first step is to start making some observations about the way that a spring-loaded shooter works. The very first thing that I would notice is that, well, before you launch it, it isn't even moving. Since its initial velocity is zero, and zero times anything is zero, we can just remove this entire thing right here. The second thing I notice is that, well, once you launch it, it's not even touching the spring anymore, so this whole thing is also zero. The third thing that I would notice is that, in the moments immediately before and after it is launched, it's at the exact same height. So, if the initial height and the final height are equal, then we can subtract this thing off from both sides. The last thing I notice is that I really, really don't want to deal with air resistance right now, so we're going to pretend like it isn't there. But I'll come back to it later, I promise. And now, would you look at that? Isn't that cool? We took that big, long, ugly thing and turned it into this. From here, the natural thing would be to say, okay, well then let's figure out the mass of the plastic shooter, the spring constant of the spring, and how far we squeeze it, and then we can figure out the velocity. But I... I'm not a natural person. No, like, seriously, I just kind of like crawled out of this undulating gelatinous mass in the basement of a laboratory somewhere. Which honestly is probably the main reason why none of the kids really wanted to play with me at school. The residual gelatinous mass smell just was a little strong. His name was also Carl, fun fact. So what we want to do from here is say, well, hey, if one half times the mass of the new design times the velocity of the new design squared is one half kx squared, and one half times the mass of the old design times velocity old design squared is also one half kx squared, well then, they're going to equal each other, won't they? And indeed they do. If you rearrange this a little bit, you'll see that the ratio of their velocities is equal to the square root of the ratio of their masses only flipped upside down. 
So I went ahead and weighed one of the new spring-loaded shooters, which turned out to be about 0.7 grams once it was done zeroing out. And honestly, this thing was kind of finicky, so it's probably anywhere between 0.65 and 0.75 grams, so just keep that in mind as we're going. Now, I had actually tried to measure both types of spring-loaded shooters, but like... The difference was so minimal, I couldn't even really tell what the difference was. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. So this hole is one millimeter in diameter and about one millimeter deep. Since LEGO is 1.05 grams per cubic centimeter, that means that if this little hole was filled in, there would be 0.000825 extra grams on the spring-loaded shooter. If we go back to our equation and plug in some numbers, we'll find that the new velocity is about 1.0005887 something 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 times bigger than the old velocity. So it'll go about 0.0588% farther. Now technically here I should probably just like round it off to 0 0.06, but I'm not gonna. But crazy dog, I hear you say. That was the ratio of their velocities, not the ratio of their distances. How can you possibly just say that it's going to be the same thing? Ah, excellent observation, Steven, I say, assuming that your name is Steven. Well, if the spring-loaded shooters are shot from the same height and the same angle, which is what we're investigating, then they will be in the air for the same amount of time. Since they are traveling for the same amount of time, we can multiply by t over t, which is just a fancy way of writing 1. And wouldn't you know it, how fast you're going, multiplied by how long you go that fast for, is how far you go. And there you have it. That is why new spring-loaded shooters go 0.0588% longer than they used to. Except that that's not, like, actually true. Like... At all. Ha ha! I have fooled you all! Carl would be proud. Yeah, so remember when I said that we were gonna ignore air resistance? Yeah, well, this hole in the back here makes the spring-loaded shooter a lot less aerodynamic. You know, maybe, maybe not a crazy amount, but like 0.05% also isn't a crazy amount. If a spider breathed on it, it would probably change pretty significantly. So if anything, this is actually probably slowing it down. I would love to tell you about how much, but these aerodynamic rendering softwares are... They're a little bit expensive. I mean, LEGO is expensive too, but like, <laughs> it's LEGO. Come on. What do you expect me to do? Be financially responsible? <laughs> oh, yeah... I need to get better at that. Well, if you made it all the way here to the end, thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll see you in one of these videos on the end screen here where you can listen to me ramble some more if, if you liked that. Okay, bye.